Gaza uh, to make a ground invasion. Okay, uh, how uh, Israel has also vowed a counter-offensive, and there are certain images that have come in that has that have shown us this debris and tales of death and destruction that has panned out even in the Gaza Strip right now. What exactly are the reports coming in there, trickling in from there? Uh, well, Gaza is being bomb bombarded and indiscriminately, and there are no two ways about it. Uh, the, the human cost is going to be huge, uh, but this is only to be expected. Uh, Gaza is a very, very densely populated area, 365 square kilometers of land. Uh, uh, some 2 million people live there. It's a concrete jungle. It's very hard uh, uh, to, to avoid civilian casualties, and I'm not sure uh, how much of an effort is being made to do that. Uh, so, yes. The casualty figure is going to go up. Uh, the, the border with along Gaza has seven checkpoints. Six of them are controlled by Israel and they're obviously blocked. The seventh one uh, opens into, uh, into Egypt. That is the Rafah border checkpoint. And that's where a lot of uh, Gazans are said to be assembling uh, to, to head into Egypt. So the humanitarian crisis is real. They've cut off food, water, electricity, medicines. Uh, uh, and and uh, it is an unspeakable uh, tragedy. But, uh, but Israel is is, uh, I understand, uh, very, very clear uh, that this is what they want to do. U.S. President Joe Biden has called it, and I'm quoting, an act of sheer evil. Uh, American support uh, is strong and steady with Israel. Uh, they are working on a ground offensive. The U.S. has uh, sent uh, a plane full of munitions yesterday. They've already deployed one warship, that is U.S.'s Gerald Ford. Uh, they've, uh, uh, they've, they've, uh, uh, they've spoken about one more warship that is USS uh, uh, Eisenhower that is heading this way. So two American warships deployed here. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will be landing in Jerusalem tomorrow. Uh, so America is uh, firmly in support of Israel. And uh, the message from U.S. President Biden is uh, that Israel has to do what it has to do. So the airstrikes continue. A ground offensive looks imminent at this point. So this yeah. is going to escalate. And the, uh, the fighting in Gaza is definitely going to escalate. The question now is uh, whether this is going to spread beyond this. Uh, yeah. uh, like I've already told you that there are two other flashpoints, Syria and Lebanon, but how far do they plan to take it uh, is what we have to wait and see. That's exactly my last question. I wanted to ask you, Palki, that uh, on everyone's mind is the question that if all the terrorists from Israel have been flushed out, and as you point out that the counteroffensive in Gaza has only gone up and it's it's indiscriminate, uh, you know, violence that we have witnessed in Gaza and, un, un, you know, uh, a human tragedy which is unfolding. But what exactly is at stake for the West Station region, keeping in mind that there are different countries that can get involved and different, uh, you know, stakes which are involved here. The Western superpowers, of course, have strongly come in favor of Israel, as you pointed out. Uh, I'll answer your question in a few parts. The first thing, and that is going to be critical in, in, in figuring out what happens next, is what is the political end game that the Israeli leadership is looking at? Sure. Uh, when you declare war, you have to define what is your purpose. Are you taking territory? Are you killing people? Are you dismantling installations? Or are you just making a point? And unfortunately, wars have been fought on all these for all these reasons and more. So Israel has to define what it wants to do. When you launch a ground offensive into Gaza, what are you trying to do? Are you just trying to dismantle the Hamas leadership? Do you want to occupy Gaza? And that's something Israel has done before. After the 1967 war, they took control of Gaza. But it's it's... The, the cost is huge, both militarily and politically. Uh, controlling that enclave uh, is, is going to be very, very expensive. So are you just going to kill the Hamas leadership and dismantle their infrastructure and come back? In which case you're leaving behind uh, a Gaza Strip that is, that is a mound of rubble. Yeah. And uh, there, there would be anger and someone else will come up to take the place of Hamas. So that is one. The second is that the kind of support that is being uh, professed by regional players and global players, you know, every country is going to say that th this is wrong and there should not be a war and you should try and talk, but how far are you going to go? Uh, uh, Arab powers like the UAE have condemned the actions of Hamas. Uh, Saudi Arabia has not taken a side while calling for dialing down of hostilities and probably putting a pause on the normalization process. Iran says we were not involved, but they have uh, they have backed Hamas. The, the, the Ayatollah, the supreme leader, has, uh, has made statements in support of Hamas and very explicit ones. So that does not help the situation. Lebanon is in a bit of a tricky space. They cannot control Hezbollah, uh, so they will have to see how this plays out for them. Yeah. Syria already is in the middle of a civil war. How much can Syria do except uh, giving space to, uh, to Hezbollah and to other Iranian assets to keep launching attacks? So it's 
it's a very, very complicated mix here. Having said that, support for Palestine is very limited. They may get money, they may get some weapons, but it's going to be very hard to... Nobody's, nobody's putting boots on the ground. And Israeli mm. military is the strongest in the region. And yeah. now they have military support from the US. So this is a one-way fight increasingly, Anusha. And uh, uh, it's not a question of who is going to win it, but how do you define that victory sure. uh, is what we have to wait and see. That's very well put, uh, Palki. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. And thank you so much for sending us all those reports. We'll keep coming uh, back to you and following that coverage. That was Palki Sharma live from Tel Aviv getting us that story. The situation in Israel continues to be very tense, as I earlier argued. My colleague Palki Sharma is reporting from there. She's gotten just those ground reports telling us about how exactly the civilians are facing the kind of attacks that have been witnessed. Of course, there are certain cities towards the south which are adversely affected. And of course, in Tel Aviv as well, the situation remains on a high alert. Palki with us uh, on the broadcast. Good morning, Palki. Um, Give us a sense about how the situation is right now in Tel Aviv. Uh, in other parts of Israel, what are the reports really coming in? Uh, all of yesterday, we heard a lot of sirens everywhere we went. There were military choppers uh, uh, buzzing overhead. So there is tension. The place where I am in Tel Aviv is usually chock-a-block at this time. Uh, uh, there is a beach. It is always uh, full of people. Uh, I have been here before uh, on multiple occasions and I can tell you that this city looks deserted even though you see the odd vehicle going uh, uh, here and there but there is a lot of tension people are not taking chances with security there have been multiple red alerts yesterday and the death toll unfortunately keeps going up uh, the latest count is that Israel has seen more than 1,200 dead, 1,200. In Gaza, the number has crossed 900. And we know that there are still uh, many hundreds of people who are still injured. Uh, uh, so the death toll can only be expected to rise. Uh, that is the situation as of now. In terms of fighting, it has now uh, spread to three fronts. We know that Israel is bombing targets in Gaza and bombing them uh, in, in very large numbers and waves of airstrikes every few hours. So that is very much on as they prepare for a ground offensive. I'll come to that later on what is the plan for the ground offensive. But Gaza is one area where they are uh, where they're attacking Hamas targets. The other two fronts are uh, the border uh, with Lebanon in the north. Uh, the tensions with Hezbollah have been on the rise. They have been, Israel says there have been provocations. The other side says there have been provocations. Either way, there are uh, missile attacks uh, 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 that are being exchanged. Uh, and then there is Syria. Uh, and Israel is said to be striking uh, Iranian targets in Syria, uh, Hezbollah targets in Syria uh, from the Golan Heights. So this is clearly spreading. As of now, it is aerial strikes. As of now, it's aerial strikes. There were there were certain reports, uh, you know, which were coming in yesterday. Some of our colleagues from News 18 were also reporting that Tel Aviv, relatively speaking, is still, you know, you can see the sirens or one odd car going. But there are other cities and parts of Israel which are far worse, worse affected. Um, are there parts of Israel where there's still a hostage-like situation where there are serious instances or hostage instances that have been reported, Palki? No, I think all parts of Israel are now completely under the control of the Israeli military. Uh, uh, all uh, uh, terrorists or uh, people from, from the other side have been either neutralized uh, or, or flushed out. Uh, yesterday we saw reports of 1,500 bodies yeah. of Hamas uh, terrorists being recovered in parts of Israel. So the Israeli military now says that the area is completely under their control. The area where the, the music festival happened, a couple of the kibbutzes where we saw uh, a massacre. There are very, very gory details of uh, uh, what played out there and the kind of attacks that were carried out on women, on children, on babies. Some reports saying that uh, babies were beheaded, uh, but, but that is a conflicting report and it's causing a lot of controversy here. Uh, having said that, uh, the Israeli military says it is in control of the ground of the entire Israeli territory. But a lot of places uh, around Gaza are now out of bounds for people. You cannot go. We tried to go south yesterday uh, uh, and we tried to go beyond Zerot, uh, which was one of the villages that uh, one of the towns that came under a serious attack and saw a 20 hour long gun battle. You're not allowed access. So uh, and, and part of the reason is that they are trying to sanitize the area. The other part is that they're preparing for a ground offensive and uh, they are moving their military assets uh, towards the border with Gaza uh, to make a ground invasion. Uh, how uh, Israel has also vowed a counter-offensive and there are certain images that have come in that, has, that have shown us this debris and tales of death and destruction that has panned out even in the Gaza Strip right now. What exactly are the reports coming in there, trickling in from there? 
Uh, well, Gaza is being bomb bombarded and indiscriminately, and there are no two ways about it. Uh, the, the human cost is going to be huge, uh, but this is only to be expected. Uh, Gaza is a very, very densely populated area, 365 square kilometers of land. Uh, uh, some 2 million people live there. It's a concrete jungle. It's very hard uh, uh, to, to avoid civilian casualties, and I'm not sure uh, how much of an effort is being made to do that. Uh, so, yes, the casualty figure is going to go up. Uh, the, the border with along Gaza has seven checkpoints. Six of them are controlled by Israel and they're obviously blocked. The seventh one uh, opens into, uh, into Egypt. That is the Rafah border checkpoint. And that's where a lot of uh, Gazans are said to be assembling uh, to, to head into Egypt. So the humanitarian crisis is real. They've cut off food, water, electricity, medicines. Uh, uh, and and uh, it is an unspeakable uh, tragedy. But, uh, but Israel is is, uh, I understand, uh, very, very clear uh, that this is what they want to do. U.S. President Joe Biden has called it, and I'm quoting, an act of sheer evil. Uh, American support uh, is strong and steady with Israel. Uh, they are working on a ground offensive. The U.S. has uh, sent uh, a plane full of munitions yesterday. They've already deployed one warship, that is USS Gerald Ford. Uh, they've, uh, uh, they've, they've, uh, uh, they've spoken about one more warship that is USS uh, uh, Eisenhower that is heading this way. So two American warships deployed here. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will be landing in Jerusalem tomorrow. Uh, so America is uh, firmly in support of Israel. And uh, the message from U.S. President Biden is uh, that Israel has to do what it has to do. So the airstrikes continue. A ground offensive looks imminent at this point. So this is yeah. going to escalate. And the, uh, the fighting in Gaza is definitely going to escalate. The question now is uh, whether this is going to spread beyond this. Uh, yeah. uh, like I've already told you that there are two other flashpoints, Syria and Lebanon, but how far do they plan to take it uh, is what we have to wait and see. That's exactly my last question I wanted to ask you, Palki, that uh, on everyone's mind is the question that if all the terrorists from Israel have been flushed out and as you point out that the counteroffensive in Gaza has only gone up and it's it's indiscriminate uh, you know, violence that we have witnessed in Gaza and, and, and you know, uh, a human tragedy which is unfolding. But what exactly is at stake for the 